In this section, we will deal with these four laws. And these five laws we will see in the part two session. Right? Before starting the law of centrality, I would like to describe in brief about the pulp cavity under the divisions of the pulp cavity. Pulp cavity is an enclosed space present in the tooth which is surrounded by a dentine all over except at the apical foramen through which the blood vessels and nerves enters the pulp cavity. Right? So pulp cavity, the central cavity present in the tooth enclosed by dentine all over right enclosed by dentine all over this is enamel right enamel dentine and pulp this entire thing is called a pulp cavity. The pulp cavity is divided into coronal of and a radicular of. This is called a pulp chamber. Which is present in the radicular portion is called a root canal. Right? If you observe this session, imagine this closed room as a pulp chamber which has a roof, floor and four different walls. The mesial, distal, buccal and lingual walls. Right? See, imagine this cube as a pulp chamber it has a roof right it has a roof and it has a floor these are the four different walls of the pulp chamber this is a mesial distal, buccal and lingual. These Krasner and Ranko took a suction at a CEJ as they considered the cemento enamel junction is the most important anatomical landmark in giving all these nine laws. Right? See the first law of Krasner and Ranko which is law of centrality. What does this law of centrality defines? It states that the pulp chamber is always located at the or absolutely located at the center of the two surface at the level of CEJ. If you take a cross section at the CEJ, this is a mesial, distal, buccal and lingual. The pulp cavity or the pulp chamber is always located at the center of the two surface. This is a two surface. This is a pulp chamber. The pulp chamber is always located or absolutely located at the center of the two surface. Right? This is a law of centrality. Coming to the law of concentricity. Law of concentricity states that if you take a section at CEJ, also the pulp chamber are always concentric to the external two surface wall. Suppose this is external two surface and this is a pulp chamber wall. This is external to surface and the pulp chamber wall. The pulp chamber wall is always concentric to the external to surface. Or suppose if there is a bulge on buccal side, right? There is a buccal, a lingual, mesial, and distal. The pulp chamber always follows the two surface outline. If there is a bulk or if there is a bulge on the buccal surface, you can see a similar bulge in the pulp chamber. For suppose if there is a concavity or a depression 
in the two structure in the lingual side this is the buccal this is the lingual the mesial and distal the same is duplicated or represented in the pulp chamber you can see a same depression or concavity that means pulp chamber is always concentric to the external two surface law cg at the level of cg the distance between the external two surface and the wall of the pulp chamber is same throughout the concentricity of the two right or suppose this is the external two surface and this the pulp chamber right the distance between the external two surface and the pulp chamber wall is always same all around the concentricity of the two law of color change it states that the floor of the pulp chamber is always darker when compared with the adjacent walls right so it is mentioned in the grossman the different colors of different structures if you take enamel it is white in color if you take dentin it is yellow in color and the floor of the pulp chamber is gray in color whereas the orifices is a dark gray or black in color and if you observe the pulp stones they are pearly white or dark yellow in color